of spiritual awakening. In this episode, myths and snags of the spiritual awakening journey are uncovered. Noticing these myths brings your awareness about lingering or subconscious concerns and brings them into the light of the spiritual awakening journey where people have maybe deep concerns. You'll want to know that haven't simmered into consciousness, which hinder the spiritual awakening process. Some of the following myths are ones that may be held by those people on the spiritual awakening path, and other myths are those held by about the spiritual awakening journey, but they're not on the journey. Bringing these myths to our attention helps us to notice when we may be operating from that myth so we can release it. And other ways, bringing these myths to awareness is beneficial for us to notice the social norms and expectations that bind us through our ego and old ideas that are no longer operational and obsolete, clearing our way to higher levels of awareness. Noting here, there are different levels of spiritual awakening experiences from what I identify as mild, moderate, and extreme. Examples of mild spiritual awakening experiences include some out-of-body experiences, feelings of transcendence during meditation practices, or shifting from waking consciousness to alpha brainwave states, some nighttime dreams, some hypnosis experiences, and noticing when our intuition is operational. Moderate spiritual awakening experiences can include some out-of-body experiences, and this category are stronger than the mild ones, some dreams like after-death communication and some lucid dreaming, heightened sense of intuition that include any of the 50 plus kinds of intuition, entrainment that occurs through specific transformational music, and some nighttime dreams that are often remembered for a lifetime. Extreme spiritual awakening experiences include near-death experiences, shaktipa, some nighttime dreams that also can last a lifetime in our memory and are life-changing. The same with some healing experiences and some out-of-body experiences and intense musical experiences. This list does not represent all the ways people experience spiritual awakenings, and each experience is unique. When a person is on a spiritual awakening journey, they may have their own hidden agenda, sometimes even from themselves, surprisingly, that can simmer to awareness later in life. In one person's hidden agenda, they felt they had a timeline that would accelerate their spiritual awakening when they reached a specific age, but they weren't aware of this until later in their life. This contract is also called a blueprint. Being aware of the contract or blueprint is helpful in understanding the journey we're on and understanding why we make specific decisions that may seem almost like a sabotage to ourselves. Their contract was to experience certain difficulties in life and achieve in different areas as leading them having the experience of a, quote, normal human life. And the caveat is their, quote, normal life, unquote, was and is not normal by many standards in terms of their different intuitive abilities and occurrences that happen to them and around them. Because they knew of the acceleration that would occur at a specific time, they lived in a certain way for the majority of their life. For some people, this would be delaying the inevitable, and for others, it would be complete immersing in the human milieu of upheaval for experience. A myth is one and done, or people live in a state of bliss myth. A myth I've encountered with people is they have one spiritual awakening experience 
and they think it's a one and done thing. This is far from the truth. Our spiritual awakening is ongoing and evolves as we are willing to continue the journey. There are lessons after spiritual awakening, just as before. There are also chores to do, as well as layers of healing and understanding. Another common saying that goes along with this concept is, chop wood, carry water before spiritual awakening, chop wood, carry water after a spiritual awakening. While some spiritual awakening experiences do blow up the person's life, and make drastic changes, there is still integration, lessons, healing, and transformation taking place all the way till we are ready to go on to the ne next dimension in dying of our physical body and continuing our journey. Another example of a myth in this category is the state of perfection myth. The myth about this concept is once a person has a spiritual awakening experience, they are in a state of perfection. Their life is easy. There are no challenges. Or if there are challenges, they are easily resolved because they have access to the answers and may be even all the answers. Other myths about this state of perfection are there is no need to have effort to learn all healing and resolution has taken place. There will be no more real challenges and a person cannot lose their spiritual awakening gains. I have known people who have tremendous spiritual awakening experiences. They include near-death experiences and they did not heal their traumatic past. As a result, they devolved and lost abilities that were previously accessed. Their ability to manage their emotions was lacking because they had mental and emotional dysregulation, a perfection complex that means they felt they were above making mistakes and they had all the answers and that violated others. They misused their power, created alienation, sabotaging their endeavors and friendships and the systems of community they had built. Which brings us to the next area that folds into the myth of the state of perfection. And this is the myth of spiritual superiority. This myth is partly borne out by spiritual teachers from all disciplines who have taken advantage of their students and misused their power. These situations range from expecting finances to be turned over, manipulation, using their spiritual mastery over people, and even sexual abuse. When people are aware of these real situations, gaining spiritual awakening and wisdom can take on a different quality of respect, but also there is temptation of the misuse of power. And the myth of spiritual superiority is not only linked to spiritual teachers, along with this superiority is linked to competition. Our basic human motivations are sometimes triggered when we are with other people. Competition to have more spiritual awakening, more training, more insight, be better, is also linked to the spiritual superiority myth and the state of perfection myth. Often people may wish once they have a spiritual awakening, their life is perfect, they have all the answers, everything is going well and will always go well. This may be wishful thinking from the side of not having a spiritual awakening experience or even after having one or several spiritual awakening experiences. This myth may include the idea of not having to work, not having bills, traumas are healed, relationship issues are resolved, and will always be resolved. All is good all of the time. Another myth is a single right path myth. Frequently, we see in history the prevailing attitude of different spiritual and religious leaders who have shoved their perspective down upon others to the point of death. This single right path notion still persists with the ideas that people are special for following a certain path, 
They're the chosen ones, thus relegating all others to infidels, disparaging someone who does not follow their path. The other people are ignorant, unworthy, and not chosen. We are still dealing with this notion all over the place, even in politics. The single right path notion is sometimes perpetuated by a leader who wants loyalty from people who need to feel special. In undisguised ways, people still show up at our front door with a book in their hand saying they want to share the good word with you. This is another version of they are special and you are an imbecile. Often these people are brainwashed to think they're doing the work of God, implying your way of spirituality must be less, and they don't ask. Often they're told they get something in heaven from their good deeds or conversion, so it's self-motivated. The single right path is dangerous and deadly. Even in modern spiritual groups, they are intending to capture the energy of another person for their benefit, which is an ancient dominance tactic, whether conscious or unconsciously, in their righteousness. The blissed out myth. A spiritual awakening experience may give the person a peak feeling of understanding, clarity, and even resolution and releasing traumas, unhealed area, and blocked energy. These uplifting experiences are integrated into life, including managing income, bills, dishes, buying groceries and cooking, taking care of our body with exercise and getting good sleep, managing relationships with family and children and parents and other areas. While spiritual awakening experiences can and do bring a profound connection, feelings of love and peace and understanding, this is not a constant state. And as the human experience continues to unfold, there are times of introspection, setbacks, and challenges that continue. From a physiological perspective, during a peak experience, the system is receiving serotonin and dopamine that are feel-good chemicals. The way that we connect to continuing to release those positive chemicals, but in smaller doses, if through continuing specific practices that support continued integration, which are releasing our ordinary waking consciousness by accessing alpha and deeper states, then we're able to sustain and deepen the peak experiences, develop the observer perspective while lessening depression, anxiety, and release trauma. Another myth is all is good all the time myth. A myth that seems to be taken up by some people if they want to be identified to be on the spiritual awakening path is that everything is rainbow and unicorns. When a person is in this mode, they are also living out the myth that does not include experiencing the range of human emotions because having, quote, negative emotions is perceived as bad. Life may be perceived this way because of a romantic idea about spiritual awakening eliminates suffering and wanting everything to be lovely, or there's a fear of personal challenges and the work that it takes for healing and personal growth and that commitment to occur. The no more challenges, also known as the escape myth. From an outside perspective, it may seem to some people or they may wish when there is a spiritual awakening, it is either an escape from the responsibilities of life, as well as dealing with unresolved issues and challenges that arise and will arise in the future. I've known people who wanted to join an ashram or a nunnery for these reasons. They felt overwhelmed by having to learn about house insurance, medical insurance, managing their money, and thinking about auto repairs and home repairs. Their solution was to join a place where they could pray all the time and not have to worry about all those areas. It's also important to note in the spiritual awakening process, learning methods and tools to develop greater awareness, access greater emotional and mental regulation, resilience, deepen intuition and compassion, 
heal trauma and rewire our neurological system, develop calm and inner wisdom and are a work in progress. Another aspect of the no more challenges or escape myth is the no more suffering myth. Suffering may be part of the self that is fading away and learning to let go of as part of the spiritual awakening process. While some people suffer over their own life or the life of their families, others suffer over the suffering of other people, creatures, and the environment. This suffering can be paralyzing. However, during the spiritual awakening process, there can be a release of personal suffering, moving to enjoyment and gratitude and compassion and to actions that are in alignment that are movement towards making changes. And the spiritual bypassing myth. Spiritual bypassing refers to the use of spiritual ideas and practices to avoid confronting or addressing underlying emotional or psychological issues. While spiritual awakening can be a powerful tool for healing and growth, it can also be misused as a way to avoid facing difficult emotions or situations. This can lead to a superficial or incomplete understanding of experiences. One of the primary dangers of spiritual bypassing is that it can hinder true healing and personal growth. By avoiding confronting unresolved trauma and mental and emotional issues, individuals may inadvertently perpetuate patterns of self-destructive behavior or their blind side or simply not being able to move beyond a certain place. Additionally, spiritual bypassing can create a false sense of enlightenment or spiritual superiority, leading to disconnections from others and a lack of empathy. Another concern is that spiritual bypassing can be used to justify harmful or exploitive behaviors. Some individuals may use spiritual language to rationalize abusive or manipulative actions, claiming that they are acting in accordance with a higher purpose. This can be particularly dangerous in religious or spiritual communities where there may be a culture of unquestioning obedience to authority. This myth may also be perpetuated as spiritual awakening becomes more mainstream because there's a risk that it may be commercialized and reduced to a superficial consumer product. This can contribute to a culture of spiritual bypassing as individuals may see quick fixes and superficial experiences rather than engaging in a deeper journey of self-discovery where they have to do the work. The next myth is the mental instability myth. Mental instability is in part becoming an obsolete concern for several reasons, as there are more people who want to understand spiritual awakening experiences more people who have spiritual awakening experiences and normalizing of spiritual awakening experiences, these all contribute to cultural understanding. These changes create a widening awareness about spiritual awakening experiences as a positive opportunity for the individual of expansion of consciousness instead of a pathological diagnosis as an inability to deal with life a disassociative episode or an immediate pharmaceutical intervention and label. What this means is when there are people in a community who know how to understand energy systems, how to provide practices that anchor and balance the person who's going through a spiritual awakening, instead of pathologicalizing the experience, the myth goes away. It is getting the people who are having the experiences to the people who know how to be of assistance, which is not the Western medicine mental health approach or physical health approach. The other component of the mental health instability myth is the understanding of trauma, how trauma may be considered an opportunity as a spiritual awakening and how to work with a person who has experienced trauma in a holistic 
And by holistic, I mean mental, emotional, physical, energy, and spiritual, comprehensive and compassionate way. Therefore, working with people with spiritual awakening experiences requires a greater understanding and wisdom of systems that are not mainstream concepts. However, there are qualified people who are able to navigate these different assessments and provide the necessary guidance, structure, safety, and wisdom. This myth is based in historic mental health treatment of people, giving them a diagnosis without addressing their trauma history, their cultural relationships, not testing for common deficiencies that contribute to instability, not addressing nutrition, sleep, or substance abuse, and other important elements. To clarify, when people have a spiritual awakening experience, it, is, it often is the opposite of mental instability. A spiritual awakening experience often leads to mental clarity and emotional stability and insight. When a person has a guide and a system to use to anchor their energy so they can process their experiences, it aids the body, mind, emotions, and spirit to allow the neurological system to heal, integrate, and transform. The method of accessing deeper levels of consciousness on a regular also simultaneously facilitates connection to intuition and deep inner trust, boosting the immune system, developing mental and emotional regulation, resilience, calming, and restoration. The significant change of identity myth about loss or significant change of identity when a person has a spiritual awakening experience is based on changes within a person that are perceived by the outside world, often as disparate with the mainstream culture. This is because there may be a change in values which changes the person's interests time spent engaging in specific activities, and emphasis on leading a harmonious life. When a person is from a specific community of people who hold certain beliefs about religion, relationships, activities, it can seem there has been a 180 degree direction change. Often the person has always had certain proclivities and is inherently expressing their innate self after they have experienced one or several spiritual awakenings. It's the spiritual awakening experience has created inner circumstances of awareness that surface that are no longer congruent with their previous life and support that. The following is an example of this kind of identity myth. I met a woman who said she had been a Presbyterian her whole life. She lived in upper class America and saw the Archangel Michael in her living room, which did not fit into the Presbyterian belief system. She did make dramatic changes, but this alone was not what changed her life. There was a group of circumstances that all contributed to the changes, including her children left home because they all graduated from high school. Her husband had an affair and she moved to a different state. The loneliness and isolation myth. People, especially in the past, may have felt isolated from others because of experiences they knew were unique to them. Some people are able to sense or know that most people, even as children we can sense this, do not have the capacity to understand out-of-body experiences and other spiritual awakening experiences. So they learn to not speak about them, and that's because our culture doesn't talk about them. They don't value them. They don't discuss them in any way. Many times people allow these memories and experiences to fade into the background as they go on with their lives. And some people remember these experiences later. There's often a feeling of being different from others and a knowing that these experiences do not fit into the mainstream values. There is a knowing, sharing spiritual awakening experiences can jeopardize their friendships and relationships. 
their social connections and career because the experiences are categorized as crazy or unbelievable. An example is a woman who was a hospice nurse who worked with families with children. She had a near-death experience that changed her abilities of perception and could communicate with those who had passed. However, she knew not to tell her clients she could communicate, but determined a way to share information in a non-threatening way. Although she was able to deliver information that was helpful, she still had her professional relationships that she did not want to have them know about her abilities. When she was able to share all the layers of her experience with a group of experiencers, her trepidation was palpable and also her relief in finally not feeling isolated. The takeaways are finding others that accept spiritual awakening experiences and to share with them and also listen to other people who are sharing their experiences. And the second takeaway is we are in a time of transition and there are groups now where others also share diverse spiritual awakening experiences who understand as human beings it is important to have this social connection and support. The loss of control myth. Spiritual awakening experiences often occur in different gradations, which I mentioned in the beginning, mild, moderate, and extreme. A concern is that when a person has a spiritual awakening, there will be a loss of control, which can include of the physical body, mental, emotional components, and including dreams and other times, we have the ability and empowerment to place parameters on how we are comfortable in experiencing and living with spiritual awakening experiences. And as we draw upon systems that provide emotional and mental regulation, we increase that empowerment. Other ways that we sustain control is through getting good sleep, healing our trauma, developing and using healthy boundaries, getting nutritional support and addressing deficiencies, avoiding using substances because they also create disturbances and have specific deficiencies related to each one. Another myth is finances are doomed and there will be financial hardships. There's an old program that people who have spiritual awakenings, healers, people who are on the spiritual awakening path are poor and will always be poor because either they believe, one, there's no financial success to be had, two, they believe that if a person is spiritual, it is incongruent to have money and be financially successful. Number three, their offerings are not valuable or valued. Or number four, they're unworthy. Other areas that can contribute to this myth is there is a detachment from material possessions. The detachment from material possessions can emphasize renouncing of material wealth or there's a fear of abundance because it could be misused. People are not trained to learn about money and secondary education does not offer this training, nor does elementary school, so it remains an unknown. These are misconceptions about spiritual awakening, and it's noted that people who have great financial prosperity can and do donate to different areas of need, making practical and vast improvements in the way of life for people who do not have access to food, water, health care, homes, education, and also to animals and other areas. Many people are models of spiritual growth, have spiritual awakening experiences, and financial success. Permission to have financial prosperity with spiritual awakening, to be worthy and have worthy offerings, to learn and be joyful and manage money is also possible. Now you have the content to dispel any areas that may have held you back as well as knowing where others may have stumbling blocks in our spiritual awakening journey. Right on these areas for transforming ourselves and for transforming the cultural paradigm. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe and check out the three Malete programs.